The Oklahoma State Cowboys have arrived in Ames, Iowa with heavy hearts. These coaches and players are dealing with tragic news. Women's basketball head coach Kurt Budke and assistant coach Miranda Serna were killed in a plane crash last night. In moments, another kickoff arrives for this undefeated team, while an entire university community is overcome with grief. And with that, we welcome you to Jack Trice Stadium here in Ames, Iowa. Tonight, Iowa State hosts the second-ranked 10-0 Oklahoma State Cowboys. Good evening, I'm Joe Tessitore, and I welcome you to Ames, Iowa, where early this morning the news started to circulate among those in the traveling party with the Oklahoma State football team. And once again, this athletic family this close-knit university community has to deal with unthinkable horrors. Ten years ago, ten members of the basketball program lost their lives in a plane crash. Last night, two more members of this athletic family lost their lives. Women's basketball head coach Kurt Budke and assistant coach Miranda Cerner were killed when a single-engine plane they were traveling in crashed in Arkansas. Two others not affiliated with the university, including the pilot, died. Bud Key had turned the women's basketball program into winners after taking over in 07. Miranda Cerner was a veteran coach. She was a valued part of this Oklahoma State family. I'm now joined by my partner, Rod Gilmore. Rod, there's been a lot of reflection today. University president said it is beyond words. Well, this football team was somber this morning, devastated, and just really grieving. And, you know, people forget how close this coaching staff with the football team was to Coach Butkey and Coach Cerna, and how these players were close to the women's basketball players as well. They're all hurting right now. But you can't forget also that this team had tragedy earlier this season. Assistant coach Glenn Spencer lost his wife before the Texas A&M game and this team was devastated then but they found a way to bounce back and rally and to have to deal with something else to do is just really really tragic. As for how the players and coaches are dealing with this we say hello to Samantha Steele. Guys, the Oklahoma State coaching staff elected not to wake up the players this morning with the news of this tragic plane crash, but by the time they got to breakfast, the majority of the team already knew. They sat in silence and watched the press conference on Sports Center where their University of President addressed the audience. And guys, Coach Gundy explained to them what happened and also told them that he didn't want them to use something of this magnitude to motivate them for something as relatively insignificant as a football game. He said, this is life and death, and this is just football, guys. To put this into perspective, the city of Stillwater is a small town, only about 49,000 people. The stadium itself seats 60,000, so this entire community revolves around this university and this athletic program, and they are surely really tonight. And within the past few minutes, a moment of silence was observed. We now observe a moment of silence in recognition of Oklahoma State's and our great loss. There will be football on this night filled with such loss. The second ranked Cowboys will play on kickoff when we return. Oklahoma State plays on while grieving, ranked second in the BCS standings, and Rod controlling their own destiny to play for the national championship. 10-0 for the first time in history, but two more wins, and they get a shot at the big prize. Two games away, heavily favored tonight in a game they're supposed to dominate, and then they get a break for a week or so before they take on Oklahoma in Bedlam. Let's talk about the formula for success for Oklahoma State because it's pretty simple. They score 51 points a game, and they do so with perhaps the most dynamic duo in the game. And, and probably the most exciting offense in college football. And you're right, it begins with Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman, perhaps the best combination out there in throwing and catching. Whedon, what a great season he's having. He's become a Heisman front runner in the last week or so. 31 touchdown passes, completing 73% of his passes. And that man is the most dynamic wide receiver 
receiver in college football. He'll be a top eight pick in the, in the spring draft for the NFL. Has 93 catches, 14 touchdowns already, and he is all sorts of special. Oklahoma State won the toss, deferred. Iowa State will receive. Jarvis West and Josh Lenz will be back from the Quinn Sharp kick, who leads the nation in touchbacks. And you can add another. He's the leader in touchbacks by 19 to number two. He has a big, big leg. And there is Mike Gundy, the head coach at Oklahoma State in his seventh year as head coach. Oklahoma State has had five 10-win seasons in their history. Mike Gundy's been a part of four of the five. He's a, as a player or a coach. He's opposite Iowa State's Paul Rhodes. He grew up 20 minutes away from campus here at Ames. Jared Barnett, a redshirt freshman quarterback. It's a pass on the first play of the game. Takes a shot downfield and gets it incomplete. Looked like it was right in the hands of Albert Gary, but he could not hold on as Daytuan Lowe came in to break that up. Yeah, he got that one out there to Gary, who's the third wide receiver. Nice ball, but Gary couldn't come up with it with the hit. Perfectly thrown. That was Lowe coming over for the hit. So second and ten. And James White gets the call, and White with just a gain of about a yard and a half that time as he was tackled by Nigel Nicholas. Now, Barnett is an intriguing story. Took over, gave some life to this offense a couple of games ago, and he's a runner first, a passer second. The running game, great skills, passing, starting to get a handle on it. And really an improbable starter, Rod, if you think about where he was back in fall camp. Absolutely. Third and nine now with Barnett and White in the backfield together in the shotgun. Across the middle, and it looks like that's going to be just short of the line to make as Albert Gary tried to stretch out. But that mark looks just short of the 30. It was Markel Martin with the tackle on third down. Good strategy by Oklahoma State's defense. Bring the pressure, force Barnett to get rid of the ball quickly, and then just make a sound tackle before the first down marker. So Kirby Vanderkamp with the second best punting average in the Big 12 comes on to boot it away, and Josh Cooper is deep for the Pokes. And he calls for the fair catch at the 25. So Brandon Wheaton, who needs just 150 yards to become the all-time leader in Oklahoma State history, he's had himself a sensational senior year comes out with those 31 passing touchdowns among his gaudy stats. Yeah, but check out what he's done on the road. He is not intimidated playing in front of a hostile crowd. There's a lot of guys that would consider that a college career. No doubt. 10 and 0 on the road. Joseph Randall and Randall scoots ahead and fights his way spinning out to the 28 where he was tackled by Steven Rumpelhammer. Now, you know the story about Whedon being a professional baseball player for five years. I wonder if that helped him deal with being on the road, not being intimidated after all those bus rides. As the Yankees first draft pick in their 2002 draft that George Steinbrenner himself called when he was drafted. Second and seven now for Whedon. Look at the time he has. And that was low intended for his star receiver, Justin Blackman. Third and seven. As this crowd here tries to rally support for their defense. Third and one, Randall. One move and a lot more. And a first down. And the ball came loose there. And Iowa State has it. That was Jake Latimer who was quick to jump on it. Ball comes out right away, no question. He wasn't down. Washington with the big hit 
and Latimer right there on the spot to pick that up. And the number two team in the country has had a very rough start. Not what we're used to seeing with Oklahoma State. Jeff Woody, a reverse now. Reynolds being chased. He wants to throw it. And it's incomplete as he was looking for Aaron Horn. Well, they are trying to come up with ways to create something to get that big momentum left. And that reverse pass wasn't going to go for an awful lot. But it would have lifted the spirits of the crowd and this offense. Paul Rhodes has pulled off a couple of those trick plays earlier this year. They had a big one against UConn to spark a second half comeback. Second and 15 design quarterback run for Barnett crosses midfield and dives out to the 47 yard line. There will be a third and about four. So Tess, if I'm counting, we got four drops, two penalties, and a missed field goal for Iowa State. Some missed opportunities, and meanwhile, Oklahoma State, the interception, the fumble, so they've been serving it up to Iowa State, but this game's still scoreless. Third and four now. Pressure up the middle, just dumps it to the running back, Woody, who fights and spins for another Iowa State first down. What a terrific job by Woody. Woody was in there to pick up the blitz, and he came off of it, and a nice job by Barnett to find him when they were outmanned by the blitz package. Nice job by Woody to feel it, to get outside, and to pick up the first down. Just the third time that Jared Barnett has started a ball game in a pressure spot against number two and pulling things off well so far with the Heisman Trophy candidate just looking on on the opposite sideline. Play action now on first down and this is complete to Darks. It's a seven yard reception to the 34 as Broderick Brown came in to make the tackle on darts. Well, you see Iowa State dominating time of possession, 27 plays. That is a great way to play defense against the Oklahoma State offense. Exactly. Don't have him on the field. Another first down with more hard running from the 235-pound sophomore, Jeff Woody. Well, the plan is a good plan. You know, they're throwing the short passes they can. They're changing tempo. They're running the quarterback. Oh, this is going to be a pick six. How about it, Sean Lewis? What moves? Sean Lewis waited for his blockers. Barnett didn't go get him, and the blockers showed up to help him out. Sean Lewis on that return rod went from a uh, running a good 40 to be in time by a sundial, but it didn't matter with the blockers coming along the way as he was able to easily get it in. So the first score of the night, not from the arm of Brandon Whedon, but the defense of Oklahoma State. Good. 70 yard interception return for a touchdown. The Big 12 Freshman of the Year a year ago gets the Cowboys going. Sean Lewis is breathing hard. 70-yard <laughs> interception return for the touchdown as the mistake was made by Jared Barnett throwing it out there in the flats. And Lewis jumped on it and got the Cowboys on the board here, 7-zip. Jarvis West will just take a knee. Well, Tess, on that touchdown, let's go back. Sean Lewis goes from GOAT to HERO. He's here. He is supposed to be over here. They have three receivers uncovered. He's coming over late, and he never stops. He just looks up and goes, and Barnett never saw him, thought he had an easy play out there, kind of lazily puts the ball out, sort of the way Lewis lazily went down the field. You I thought just, he was in. I thought I mean, he was going to get caught there. He starts jogging the last 40 yards there, <laughs> but uh, there was nobody but the one player with a slew of Cowboys ready to lead the way into the end zone. 
I mean, that defense has gotten by all year long on turnovers, even though they give up plenty of yards. And one of them here puts them on the board. So Barnett back to business, and he finds Horn once again over the middle. A gain of four and a half that time, tackled by Alex Elkins. How does Iowa State respond emotionally? They control the first quarter, and all of a sudden they're down by seven. When you sit there, the Iowa State defense uh, keeps Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman out of the end zone, and you're still trailing seven zip as we come to the final half minute of this first quarter. Jeff Woody with the inside handoff. He is met right away by Tyler Johnson. Johnson, a 24-year-old sophomore, had a pro baseball career, was an outfielder in the Angels organization. Mike Gundy does well with those former baseball players. He knows where to find them. They're already keeping money in their bank accounts. Number two team in the nation. Up a touchdown at the end of one here at Ames. Joe Tessator, Rod Gilmore, and Sam Steele here in Ames, Iowa. Number two team in the country, Oklahoma State. Up 7-0 on Iowa State. Barnett incomplete on third and four looking for Aaron Horn. He's off. He's had four passes dropped, and he's probably missed on four by himself. As he goes over to consult with head coach Paul Rhodes. And Kirby Vanderkamp will make his way back on. Kick to Josh Cooper. And it's a good boot by Vanderkamp as Cooper is backed up all the way inside the 15. Got a blocker in front, cuts back, and is able to cross out to the 41 yard line. So you see the streak of long balls continuing for Oklahoma State. Whedon now, and now maybe he has found his groove as Tracy Moore streaks inside the 35. You know what happens with this offense? It begins with Blackman, and they check to see how you play Blackman out there. And if you're doubling him, then they go elsewhere, and they really stress your linebackers and safeties. And quickly now, they go with the screen to Chelf, and Chelf has it inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. He was tackled by Jake Knott. And quickly, Oklahoma State right over the ball, wasting no time at all here. The screen again and a first down by Chelf again. Well, those screens are designed to stress the outside linebackers and safeties to make them play out of the box so that o Oklahoma State can turn around and run inside. They stress you out that way by making you decide, are you going to play pass first or run first? Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator, barely has time to look at his play sheet. Here's Whedon. And this time it's Cooper crossing. And Cooper gets it to the 16-yard line. All of a sudden, Oklahoma State's offense just wakes up when they were pinned deep. That big play to Chelf and Whedon. It's, it's like he was hungry. Yeah. And somebody was serving a meal, and he just wants to eat it now. Just wants to get after it and get this offense going. It wasn't on the field in the first quarter very much. Now here's the screen to Blackman. Blackman makes one move, then the stiff arm, but a gain of just three yards. A.J. Klein came up with the tackle on the All-American receiver. This area is big for Blackman. If you play him one-on-one, -on -one, they will go to the corner of the end zone on you. They will fade route you any chance they get. Diamond formation backfield on third and three. Smith has to fight for it, and he comes up short. A.J. Klein once again. So a fourth and one. This should be field goal time. And Quinn Sharp does indeed run onto the field. See, when you're the better team, you can be methodical. 
and just pile on the points. You don't have to worry about going for it on fourth down and getting a break or anything. You can just keep tacking on. Sharp is nearly automatic. First year with the job, but he has been sensational. 16 of 18 on the year. And he drills the 29-yarder. 10-0, number two on top in Ames. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you here. Number two trying to work their way towards a BCS title game. Oklahoma State up 10-0 on Iowa State. So Brandon Whedon on the phone. Rod, you think of this Oklahoma State team, you think of Whedon, the black men, and all the high scoring through the air. They got an interception return for a touchdown and a field goal. Jarvis West with the return. And West able to get it out to the 27 yard line. Of course, the focus today with Oklahoma State, the unimaginable tragedy suffered last night when women's head basketball coach Kurt Budke and assistant coach Miranda Cerna were killed in a plane crash. And Mike Gundy said, We're very sad to learn of their deaths. A tight family at OSU. Our coach is very close. We pull for each other. Said they both always had encouraging words. We're excited about our season and our prayers go out to the families and the team. Jarvis West now with the direct snap and West fights his way for about two and a half yards. You know that statement by Gundy does not necessarily reflect the way or the depth of emotions that he was feeling today as Sam still told us about his conveying the information to his team and how somber they all were and how they were grieving this morning at breakfast and the like. So that was a statement but we know this has been a difficult day for him. He, he couldn't even find time to chat. He was so so wrapped up and so emotional. Well, he said, listen, the first time I really talk about this, I want it to be with the grieving families, and you have to be able to respect that, which we do. Aaron Horn, look at the move by Aaron Horn, sidestepping the would-be tackler. That was Daytuan Rowe and Markel Martin trying to get him. Well, the last couple of weeks, Horn has really come on. He's the guy that can get you yards after the catch. Transfer from San Francisco City College actually came over here with the backup quarterback. And White is brought down that time by mm -hmm. Nigel Nicholas. They, they have to find a big play, a playmaker. Maybe it's Horn, but someone has to make a guy miss and get them a chunk of yardage. Remember, as Sam Stale told us, Josh Lenz was taken off the field. The leading receiver injured in the first quarter. Second and 13 now for Barnett. Quarterback draw, and he slides down at the 36-yard line. He's doing a nice job of recognizing the blitz. And when he sees it, he's able to get away from it. Is, this is a guy who's not just going to sit there, sit there in the back pocket and wait for you to tackle him. He's going to break contain. He's going to dip up inside if he can. He's more comfortable running than throwing right now. Now facing a 36, three by one receivers with White in the backfield. Take a shot downfield. And that's off the hands of Horn, but the flag comes in. The coverage was by Zach Craig. And the flag came in at the end of that play. Pass interference. Defense. Number 23. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, that, that's a good call. I was talking to referee Reggie Smith before the game about pass interference, and we went through all the possibilities, including that one, when the guy does not turn his head around. That is the thing that happens all the time. It's enough to get you flagged. So a first down at the 21. James White. Tried to go against the grain there, but only a gain of a yard and a half as Lowe made the tackle. You know, Tess, as a former DB, I can tell you that at some point when you're down the field, you know the ball's in the air, and you have to find the football. You've got to turn your head around. If you do that, 
you'll avoid a lot of pass interference calls. Yeah, Craig was just keeping his eyes the whole time on Horn. Second and eight. Here's White again. And finally the whistle is blown. And he is there at the 16 yard line. So it'll make for a third and five. You know, normally I would say that you've really got to get to the end zone here when you're the underdog. But the way they're playing and the, being in the ball game here, this is not two down territory. You try to get it here, but if you don't get it, I think you got to kick the field goal and keep this a one possession game. I agree with you. They've done a good job of muddling and shortening the game yeah. and moving the ball in little chunks against Oklahoma State. Takes a shot to the end zone and they come up with it. Darius Reynolds with the touchdown catch. team in the country only up three as Jared Barnett finds Reynolds for the 16 yard touchdown catch. And number two in a fight here in the first half. It's Darius Reynolds the senior on senior night with the 16 yard touchdown reception. A short bouncing kick fielded at the six yard line by Josh Stewart. Stewart then keeps his balance and then is taken down at the 25. Let's go back to the touchdown. Barnett sees this right now. He sees that he's got his receiver Reynolds matched up with Brown in single coverage, and he knows if he throws a good fade route, it's going to be done. And he makes the best pass he's thrown tonight, and he ought to be excited about it. If I told you that Jared Barnett would have more touchdown passes with 7.14 to go in the first half than Brandon Whedon. <laughs> go figure. You Horses. kidding me? He's got more passing yards. And he's got a touchdown to none for Whedon. And Whedon also has a pick tonight. There's Brandon Whedon, the 28-year-old Heisman Trophy candidate. Looking to get things going here for the Cowboys. And that is incomplete as he was trying to find Josh Cooper, but the coverage came from Taron Benton. A tale of a couple of quarterbacks. You want the young guy or you want the older guy? Compare this. You talk about experience and difference. 28 to 19, 24th start versus the third start. And how about that? 69 touchdown passes. Whedon, been around for a while. Super Bowl MVP Aaron Rodgers won't turn 28 until December 2nd. And that'll be a first down as Josh Cooper just lowered his pads at the end. And I was able to move the chains. I think we know it's time for him to go to work. When they go to work, they do so in quick fashion. Look at that play clock. They are lined up and snapping at 28. And that crossing the 40 was Isaiah Anderson, tackled by Jake Knott. You know, and I think emotionally, mentally, Iowa State's trying to frustrate this offense by not letting Blackman really get that involved. You know, big-time receivers like to see the football an awful lot early on. Blackman's to the near side, covered by Johnson. There he is, big number 81, one of the best players in the nation. Second and four. Whedon, plenty of options. He goes with Jeremy Smith, and Smith has it out to midfield where it'll be a first down for the Cowboys. But right now, Johnson is winning that matchup with Blackman, which is huge. I mean, he's forcing Blackman to be a decoy right now. Very mature player is Johnson. And this is Cooper again. A quick strike from Weed. Leonard Johnson, the cornerback who gets the matchup with Blackman. This is a guy that the coaches rave about his maturity. They say, listen, this is his moment. Yeah. 
You say all the accolades and water. Now you got to prove it against a guy like Justin Blackman. And now Smith coming out of the backfield on the other side. And another first down for Oklahoma State as they will have the ball just inside the 34. Now there is your all time passing leader in school history. Brandon Whedon now at Oklahoma State. Yeah, head of Zach Robinson and so many greats who have come before him including his head coach Mike Gundy. And here's Blackman now and Blackman shakes the first would be tackler and then high steps his way to the 27. Yeah, he got by Johnson on that one but career passers coach Gundy third on the list had a great career. Hartley Dykes was one of his wide receivers. Yeah, it's some serious talent back then. Of course, Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, and Brandon Whedon. What a throw and catch to Justin Blackman. Uh, this is what he can do. He's actually covered, well covered, but he just makes a great adjustment. The ball thrown short, he's able to go up and take it away. He was covered, but the great players make great plays no matter what. Look at this. He gets up and makes it happen. I mean, how about that moment in midair with that full stride motion? And Whedon has now completed 13 of his last 14 passes since throwing that interception. All eight plays on that scoring drive were passes. Brandon Whedon hits his stride here with 526 to go before the half and he finally got Blackman involved Blackman had been held pretty much out of the loop of things by Johnson but one play is all it takes to change that around here is Horn on the return now and Horn cuts back to the middle and gets out just across the 25 let's check in with Sam Guys, up until that last play, Justin Blackman was probably the most frustrated person on this Oklahoma State offense. Every time he came off the field, very boisterous, very demonstrative. He was the loudest, most vocal guy in the huddle right there. You almost knew they were going to come to him. Leonard Johnson, like you talked about, been getting in his face a little bit, started out giving him cushion, and then started pressing a little bit more. Started John, maybe getting a little bit too overconfident there on that last play, guys. Justin Blackman, very happy guy now. Well, well Sam, you're right. I mean, that matchup is something Johnson won it, and you know the competitor Blackman had had enough of it and wanted to get back at him. This is a fourth and one with Barnett after the timeout. And they are able to pick it up with Jeff Woody. One timeout left. As the clock is running again, and he clocks it leaving eight seconds in the half. Well, Rhodes is not happy with the way the clock went there. He, he thought he could save some time there and let the officials know how he was feeling about it. But well one of his linemen was still lingering on the other side of the line of scrimmage and a little late to get back and lined up. Well you got eight seconds. You have one timeout. You probably need about 15 yards maybe 20 to have a realistic shot at a field goal you can run a run a route in that time catch the ball get down call your timeout and line up for a field goal Grant Mahoney their senior kicker has a 57 yarder in his career and there is the shot but it goes incomplete leaving now just three seconds as Darius Darks could not come up with a completion I stopped counting five six drops by the receivers tonight for Iowa State it's been that kind of a night well, now it's just uh, wind up and throw it as far as you can. Some pressure on Barnett as he tries to launch it. And he actually gets it complete, but the clock has run out and inside the 10 and unable to make a desperate effort for the goal line was Albert Garrett. Mike Gundy. Of course, such an emotional day for Mike Gundy and everybody involved with the Oklahoma State community. Let's check in with Sam Steele.
Coach, it seems so trivial to ask you about football right now, but all considering, how do you think your guys are responding to some early adversity? Well, we, we, we didn't really move very fast in this half. We got to do a better job offensively at getting in a rhythm. And then defensively, we got to get a few three and outs. You know, we just kind of got to get some energy and get things going. What kind of message do you give to your team right now? Well, they got to stay with the plan. You know, they got to continue to play hard, and we got to generate some energy and kind of move fast and play fast. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys? Thanks, Sam. 17 to 7. Number two, Oklahoma State, with a bit of a test tonight here in Ames. Now let's join Ryan Burr back in the studio. We welcome you back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Russell Athletic. With Oklahoma State up 17 to 7 on a day when the Oklahoma State community suffered an unimaginable tragedy late last night. And they got the news today, a women's head basketball coach. Kurt Budke and assistant coach Miranda Serna were killed in a plane crash. They made the decision to play on. They did so with a heavy heart. And that first half, Rod, I don't think they quite looked the way we've seen them for most of the year. Yeah. What do you make of it? I'd agree with that. Mike Gundy said that they didn't play with a lot of energy. And I can understand that after being somber and grieving all day. It's not a surprise. 267 yards out of Brandon Whedon, though, and a touchdown pass. And you get the sense when they do turn it on, boy, oh boy, they can slice up this defense, but Iowa State has played tough. So Whedon and Blackman. Well, they start to connect here in the second half. Haven't seen much of the running game from Oklahoma State as well. And Cooper with a gain of 12. Let's check in with Samantha Steele. Cautiously optimistic Paul Rhodes offensively. He said we're missing opportunities. The opportunities are there. We've just got to convert specifically our receivers cannot drop the ball guys with Josh Lenz out for the rest of the night. That's going to be tough. So third and nine for Whedon and the Cowboys. Where is Blackman? A first down is complete to Tracy Moore and he gets it to the 42 yard line. Lots of time for Wheaton. Look through his options and picked out Tracy Moore. Well, it's a little bit easier when three guys pay attention to Justin Blackman. And your other guys have got to get open when that's happening. Blackman drawing a lot of coverage, really acting as a good decoy for the others. And that 27 yard touchdown catch in the first half did Blackman. Here's Randall now and a big hole for Randall and a gain of nine for the sophomore running back. Paul Rhodes in his third year at Iowa State. Gave Iowa State their first win ever against Texas. Gave him a win at Nebraska. And he'd love to give these fans a thrill here against number two Oklahoma State. And Randall utilizing that block in front from Nick Martinez with a run for a first down to the 30 yard line before he was tackled by A.J. Klein. Pass now on first down. And he overthrew the intended target of Tracy Moore. Whedon likes to look for Blackman, but this is what's happening. Johnson pay, playing man underneath coverage handles him early on, and by the time Blackman breaks free, it's too late. Whedon had to go elsewhere. It's been the best matchup we've seen tonight. Best defender for Iowa State against one of the best players in the country. Second and ten, and this is a strike to Moore again, and Moore keeps his footing and goes right into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. What a throw by Whedon. He has a lot of confidence in that arm, and he drilled that one in there in between three receivers, three defenders. Now watch this. You see all the red shirts around. Whedon gets it in there. Not a whole lot of tackling. 
Good right, job man. by Tracy Moore to keep his balance. He's a big guy. Goes 6'1", 233. Dad played in the NBA. And he showed you his level of athleticism there as Oklahoma State takes the ball opening drive of the second half. Wing connects with Moore. Eight plays, 80 yards, quick strike. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, Sam Steele back here at Jack Trice Stadium. The stadium bears the name of Iowa State's first African-American student athlete. Trice died from injuries suffered in a football game at Minnesota in 1923. So this stadium opened in 75 as Cyclone Stadium. And then there was popular support to rename it to Jack Trice Stadium. That happened officially in 1997 to honor Jack Trice. Really sad reading that uh, info, how internal injuries, which today could be handled, weren't handled then, but look at what uh, they've done with attendance here. Fantastic. Paul Rob's very proud of that as Coach Rhodes, of the support he's been receiving from the fans. This is Jarvis West from the one-yard line. And Jarvis West cuts back and has a lot of green in front of him. And out to midfield, a very good return from the five foot seven, 160 pound redshirt freshman. He'll give Barnett and company the shortest field they've had since that turnover in the first quarter when they didn't convert. And now they'll start at midfield. And Barnett has had stretches where he's been on the money throwing the football. But the best thing he's done is scramble and buy time. Well, his running has been the best thing that they've seen out of him all year long. Had 125 yards against Kansas, had 92 yards against Texas Tech. But tonight, relying on the pass a little more, and this ball is secured by Albert Gary. Wow. Nice catch by Gary, and one dangerous throw by Barnett when he got it in there. Now, Temple, they're picking up the Temple. They actually, they need a score here. They need a touchdown to get back into the ball game. Heisman contender Brandon Whedon came right down the field on the opening drive of this second half and found Tracy Moore to make the margin 17. Barnett looking downfield. Incomplete. Darius Reynolds. Could not hold on to it all the way through the catch. Roderick Brown had the coverage. And that's the point. You made it very clearly. You've got to maintain control through coming to the ground. Oh, I think they're going to have to take a look at this, Rod. Uh, well, did that ball hit the ground, too? But watch what Brown does at the end. Once he has the ball secure, he rips it away once they're on the ground. And yeah, from that angle, you cannot tell if the ball is protected from the ground. Nor was the call on the field confirmed. They're just saying it stands, which means they didn't have the video evidence. And Jarvis West will be about a yard short of moving those sticks, so it'll bring up a third down. But West has provided a bit of a spark, and now he gives them a a short third down. They've got two downs to pick this up here. I think you have to use two downs. And a quick snap, and they are able to pick it up with Jeff Woody. So Iowa State on the move here, first down at the 27-yard line. This is a huge drive for Iowa State. You get a touchdown here, you answer, you keep the pressure on Oklahoma State. Brandon Whedon looks on, the Heisman candidate who already has a very quiet 334 and two touchdowns. That's uh, tough to say, but it can happen with Oklahoma State's offense. White in motion. And they keep it with James White. And James White to the outside. And James White inside the 10. Touchdown, Cyclones.
right back to a 10 point game. James White keeping hope alive here in Ames. Well, perhaps these last two steps towards a BCS title game aren't so easy. Iowa State just closest margin to 10. Right, right play against the wrong defense. Watch the middle linebacker go out. Watch the force guy come up. That's going to create a big hole. And with that, now you've got lots of room and good blocking down the down the field by the wide receivers opening up. But a great job at the point of attack, recognizing that the linebacker was flying out in pass coverage, and they were able to kick the force man outside. Six play drive. Remember, they had that big 50 yard kickoff return that put them in prime field position and capped by James White. And they go with the onside kick. Can you believe that? They caught Oklahoma State asleep. Jeremy Reeves on special teams. Right on top of it. And what guts and timing by head coach Paul Rhodes. Perfectly executed with a great block by Jansen Watson, the defensive back who took out the first guy, Grant Montgomery, who could have been there. So now's the moment to take advantage for the Cyclones. Barnett takes a strike. And that ball is pulled in by Albert Gary. Wow, something special in the air here in Ames right now. Uh, we talked about the need to make plays, big plays. And now you see a wide receiver in Gary, the guy who was suspended at the beginning of the season, coming in and stepping it up. And the inside handoff this time as James White gets down to the 22 yard line. Remember, White had the 32 yard touchdown run that closed this margin to 10. You have guys who've made plays for Iowa State. Johnson just made one. Now, right now, you got a lot of Alabama and Oregon fans and all these other one loss wannabe BCS title teams. Rooting on the Cyclones. Not Oklahoma. No, they need Oklahoma State to stay alive and then get them in Bedlam. And this will bring up a third and about three and a half as Rashetti Jones and Ryan Robinson combined on the tackle of White. Oklahoma wants an undefeated Oklahoma State team to show up, and Oklahoma wants to beat them and then say, hey, we're the best one loss team out there. Third and four. Iowa State has had their opportunities. Barnett. First down. Jarvis West. A little shake and bake. And it will be first and goal for Iowa State. Nice move. Nice job. One other thing. Protect the football. You got to get that ball away from where the defenders are coming. Right hand, switch it over to the left hand. He doesn't do it. He was vulnerable to the very end when he covered it up. Design quarterback run. Only about a yard and a half as Markel Martin was able to tackle Jared Barnett. This team operates best when they're spreading people out. And that time they they didn't. I tell you, I, I think they'd be better off spreading out down here, creating some room for Barnett. If you're going to run him, spread it out. Don't don't power formation down here. Brandon Whedon just waiting on the sidelines for his turn, hoping his defense can come up big now. Barnett batted down. Was Anthony Rogers he put his hand up there? Well, he's not the tallest quarterback, just about six feet, but a nice job by Rogers sliding into that window and slamming it shut. Another third and goal. 
Well, you want Barnett to be able to move. You got to get him out of the pocket. You can't keep him back there. Expect pressure. Oklahoma State brings pressure on third down. White leaves the backfield empty now. Three by two. Barnett. To the end zone. Incomplete. Defended by Martin. As he was looking for the seldom used tight end, Kurt Hammerschmidt. Yeah, fortunate it wasn't picked off. And he threw that ball right in there. Markham 10. Martin right, is right there and makes a good play on it. Martin had that thing right between the numbers and could have snuffed out any scoring opportunity. So Zach Geyer comes in on the field goal attempt. This from 24. He missed from 34 earlier. And we've got a touchdown game with major BCS title implications. That's the famed Hickory Park restaurant here in Iams Iowa, right next to Iowa State, where the meat is smoked for up to 14 hours a night. They go through 23 pounds of meat per week. And yet somehow, Rod Gilmore, you went there and you had what? I had a fish sandwich. You're the guy. I was the guy. I'm that guy. You're, you're the guy that you say, who would order this at this place? <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam Steele put down that big banana split Sunday. Oh, she had to go with the fish sandwich. Well, she had the, the brisket sandwich or something, and then the yeah the, the, the big uh, ice cream fudge brownie or something. And, and I'm the fool sitting in my room working on games. We called you. <laughs> we, we tried to wake you up. We got a good one here. And this is Josh Stewart on the return for Oklahoma State all the way out to the 39 yard line. Third and three. Off the mark, Whedon threw it behind Tracy Moore. Yeah, I think he misread the coverage. I don't think he realized that they were sitting back there with A.J. Klein flying over. I don't think he expected that at all. He was robbing the inside, Klein was, and he managed to tip that ball. I don't think Klein's had a good that. game. Oh, yeah. He has had a good night. Well, you're hard-pressed to find anybody on this Iowa State defense that hasn't played fantastic. Quinn Sharp, one of the better punters in the country, but he doesn't get a chance often. And this takes a bounce inside the 10. And did they save it? Oklahoma State special teams comes up huge. The ball downed at the one yard line. Well, they did a great job of not falling for the decoy action by the punt returner. And it's Hale 39 who gets down there to knock the ball back in without getting his body in. And remember, it's about the ball. It's not about your body. And then Justin Gilbert able to secure it down there. So Iowa State gets the ball only trailing by seven, but him. First and five now. Woody. And a game of three. We, all week we talked about what we saw on tape. How Kansas State, Texas, Texas A&M, they were all able to run the ball against Oklahoma State. They were able to use the zone read. They were able to throw screens against them. We weren't surprised that Iowa State would try and do that. Second and two now. Woody again, and he spins for the first down. So, the special team's effort of downing the punt at the one, and Iowa State able to get a first down out to the 12-yard line. Could it be one of those special nights? Iowa State will face a first down, only trailing by a touchdown against number two when we start the fourth. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore and Samantha Steele. The number two team in the country, Oklahoma State. Only up seven as we start the fourth quarter. And James White is gobbled up for no game. Now Oklahoma needs Oklahoma State to show up in Bedlam undefeated. Yes. So that if Oklahoma knocks them off, Oklahoma can lay claim to being the best one loss team out there. They got to get through a very talented Baylor offense tomorrow night first. And right now, Mike Gundy and Oklahoma State 
are worried about this one. Barnett, second and ten. They go with the screen, and West cuts back and picks up the first down. Jarvis West, they've been getting him involved tonight. Remember, Josh Lenz, who leads the team in receptions, was injured early, so they've been turning to the five foot seven redshirt freshman. Well, he's come in and he's picked up four catches, and he had a kick return that put them in great field position. He's had a big night in a limited role. So a first down to the 23 now. An improbable fourth quarter setting. Barnett, pressure up the middle, escapes it. Launches it downfield. And it is incomplete. Chris Young was the intended target. He came back for the ball. But Justin Gilbert was menacing there. And the pressure is mounting on Oklahoma State. This is a good play over there on the left side by Gilbert getting his right hand in there. But this Oklahoma State defense is now playing under stress. They're the number two team. Their offense has not been what it has been all season and the defense has to make plays. Second and ten. Barnett complete. And a first down as once again Darius Reynolds and they're saying the ball came loose at the end but the officials say otherwise Oklahoma State was arguing for it as Roger Brown came up with the ball. Well you know what they do they practice this in practice they after a pass is completed they continue to work and get the ball out and then sprint the other way that's their pick six practice along with their strip drills. Yeah they do a turnover circuit they double whistle in practice to promote fighting for the ball. Reynolds now on the screen and he's out to the 42 and that was close to being a 15 yarder but then Alex Elkins had the smarts enough to say I got to let go of him here again this Oklahoma State defense has not had to protect a lead except for that Kansas State game second and four now Jared Barnett just the third time he has even started in his career a guy who was Really nowhere realistically on the depth chart in fall camp. Could he lead the way here? Inside handoff to James White. And another first down. 166 yards rushing for Iowa State tonight. They're just the latest team to run the ball against this defense effectively. So many across the country, Alabama fans and Oregon fans, Wanting utter chaos in the BCS if Oklahoma State grabs a loss here. Barnett complete again. Aaron Horn, and how about the confidence now in Jared Barnett, Rob? Well, you feel it in the crowd. You feel it. You sense it. You hear it. And the poise of Barnett. On this first down throw, a lot of confidence in the heart of the defense. And this might be his best throw of the night. Pressure off the edge, spins away from it. And threw it to the inside of Darius Darks. They did a good job to just get back out to the edge and avoid the sack as Bill Young got tired of seeing Barnett stand back there and came with pressure and might come with more of it again now. There is Bill Young, the veteran defensive coordinator. Second and ten. The young quarterback. They go with the inside screen and good blocking in front. For Albert Gray, they are all the way down to the 24-yard line. You and I talked about it all week. We've seen lots of teams effectively throw the screen against Oklahoma State and run the ball inside. Screen again. Good block in front again. And another first down for Iowa State. <laughs> Now Young will heat them up. He will bring more pressure closer he gets to the goal line. Six minute mark in this game. He keeps himself inside the 10. 
Sean Lewis and Levy were able to get to Barnett, but they are knocking on the door. Paul Rhodes said to us yesterday, if they play their A game and we play our game, they're going to win. But something special is in the air here. And to the end zone. Touchdown, Albert Gary. Special indeed. Another well-thrown ball and a tremendous catch by Gary as he came on the crossing route to find the opening in the defense. He punched it through. We have a tie game with five and a half minutes to play. Can you believe this? Jared Barnett. The red shirt freshman is playing like a star. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, Samantha Steele here in Ames, Iowa. We're a stunning comeback by Iowa State. Has Jack Trice Stadium rocking. They talk about key plays that could have helped Iowa State. There was a missed field goal in the first quarter. And then the pick six by Sean Lewis when he was out of position and then he ran across the field to get back to his his spot. He came up with the clay of the game, probably. Isaiah Anderson from the six. And he is taken down at the 24. Sam? Guys, this Iowa State sideline is echoing that of the Iowa State crowd right now. It is absolutely electric. They 100% believe they can win this game, but they're exhausted. Center Tom Barniak was over here throwing up, guys. I don't know another way to put it, but they are just gassed. They're giving everything they can right now. Well, I think this stat will explain it. They've had 93 plays tonight. Oklahoma State has only had 65. And now Brandon Whedon, the Heisman candidate, with 450 yards and two touchdowns tonight, but also two interceptions, has his moment to shine. Randall is just blown up. Dion Broomfeld just came after him. Second and nine. Weeding downfield. Well overthrown. Looking for Justin Blackman as Leonard Johnson again rock with stride for stride. Leonard Johnson has made himself some money tonight. As you take a look at those numbers for Weeding, two picks tonight to go with the two touchdowns. But that man. Projected as a fourth round, fifth round pick, has really moved himself up with his performance against Blackman tonight. What a showcase evening for Leonard Johnson, who had that interception earlier in this fourth quarter. And now a big third and nine. Wheaton throws short and tackled short is Isaiah Anderson by Jake Knott. They're going to punt it away with four half minutes to play that that was a very difficult set of plays for Brandon Whedon you're the Heisman front runner you're in a tie ball game you're number two you're on the road you gotta get a first down you gotta move the football Quinn Sharp has one of the biggest legs in the country and he drives Aaron Horn back to the 17 Horn. Keeps on his feet and then settles in at about the 35. Second and 14. Empty backfield, Barnett in the gun.
intercepted. Alex Elkins. Late flag comes in on that tackle. But remember, turnovers, it's what they do. And this one was high over the middle. And then it was tipped. It was tipped by Jarvis West. He got one hand Turn on the it. Return. Personal foul. Horse color tackle. Offense number 75. 15-yard penalty. First down. So tack on 15 because of the horse collar at the end of this. Yeah. West tipped it. Lewis tipped it. And then it was picked off by Elkins. And you see the horse collar at the end there. And now the ball just served up on a platter for Oklahoma State. They have probably the most talented place kicker in the country in Quinn Sharp to go along with the combination of Whedon and Blackman in this game. Oil Stadium Saturday, December 3rd. Next on the Coors Light College Football Saturday Review, we'll check in on the Big 12. K-State needed four overtimes to win last week. Find out if they had anything left against Texas. Be right back. The game clock, they'll likely use a timeout with Mike Gundy here before he sends out Quinton. This. Two timeouts remaining. You have to kick this. Play clock running down, as is the game clock. They'll likely use a timeout with Mike Gundy here before he sends out Quinn yeah. Sharp, I yeah. would think. Yeah, he's got to kick this. And they do use the timeout. Quinn Sharp, the junior from Mansfield, Texas. Inside of 40 yards, he is 15 of 16. Don't you want to ice him a little bit here? This is for the 37 timeouts. They have three timeouts, does Iowa State, to take the lead. It is no good. <laughs> No good. Can I ask you a question? One of the most talented kickers in the country. Remember Boise State, Nevada last year? I remember saying those same exact simple words. You got no a good. great kicker lined up to put a top rated team ahead late in the game. Ron, I don't know that that didn't go over the upright. Just to the outside, I over the upright. Outside. So it's no good. That was so close, right over the upright. Yeah, Whedon and company thought they had one. But you got two officials standing right underneath, making the call with the understanding that they blew one. Not this crew, but officials did blow one. Look at how close Syracuse. Got to go to the inside of that upright. Yeah, and I think it goes right over the upright. Yeah, it's it's really, really high, and it continues to fade. I showed you moments ago. 0 and 18 all time against ranked teams in the top two is Iowa State. But they have taken number two to the absolute limit here. And remember, this is all on the heels of such emotion in the Oklahoma State community, suffering unimaginable tragedy with the loss of two members of their athletic family in a plane crash. End of regulation, tied up. Overtime when we return. 24 to 24, the start of overtime. They're firing themselves up as if they need any more motivation with a chance to play for the BCS title with a win tonight and then a showdown with Oklahoma. But who would have thought 
that Iowa State, especially defensively, Ron, could play at this level against this quality of an offense. Their Unbelievable. defense has been superb. And I, people forget, they've only given up 17 points tonight. They have 24 because of the pick six. And what Johnson has done in corner, really kind of shutting down Justin Blackman, has just been amazing. So Iowa State on offense first with Jared Barnett, who has 351 yards. This is the running quarterback with 351 yards. Reverses field and wide open is right. Touchdown Cyclone. Zach Geyer for the extra point. And now Oklahoma State must score seven. Here's why. Guy is picking up the second guy out. The second guy out is White. He's the second receiver to the right side. Oklahoma State blows it. Nobody picks up the second receiver coming out to the right side. Iowa State saved this play for late in the game. They never bothered to run it the entire game, waiting for the perfect time. Give credit to Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator, and well executed by Jared Barnett. His third touchdown pass of this game. This crowd is in complete disbelief. Their first lead of the game, 24 unanswered points. Needham gets it complete and a first down that time as he connects with Josh Cooper. Joseph Randall inside the 10. It'll be second and three. Mike Gundy has options down here now. With the second and short, they can run inside. And they've got fade route opportunities to the outside with Blackman. Second and calling it four now. Randall again. It's going to be third and a long one as Patrick Neal was quick to jump on Joseph Randall. And Iowa State trying to strip the football out. Oklahoma State fans, hands in their pockets. The pressure is on Weeden. Third down. To the end zone. Touchdown, Josh Cooper. Clutch drive by Whedon. Clutch catch by Cooper. The Heisman candidate in overtime. Now with 476 yards and three touchdown passes. But this extra point is a must to extend this game. Remember, Sharp missed the field goal. That could have put him in front. Late in the fourth. And we will go to a second overtime. The college football season. Could it be chaos or stay the course? Find out when we return. 
in a college football season that has been filled with outrageous twists and turns. Welcome to what could end up being the most outrageous. Iowa State and number two Oklahoma State 31 31 starting the second overtime Joe Tessitore Rod Gilmore and Samantha Steele here at Jack Trice Stadium. Whedon to start the second overtime. Balls in the air and it is intercepted by Taryn Benton. Jake Knott gets the tip. The star linebacker for Iowa State comes up with the tip, the deflection, which allows the pick by Thomas. I'm sorry, Benton. So here's the deal, folks. Iowa State, any score wins it. Inside handoff. And Jeff Woody sets them up now inside the 20. Remember, Iowa State missed a field goal, a chip shot in the first quarter. Zach Geyer, the place kicker. Will it come down to him? That's a first down run. And look at Woody. All the way inside the five. It's going to be first and goal. <laughs> Nearly a four touchdown underdog was Iowa State. And now ready to shock the college football world. If you're Iowa State, your best, most secure ball handler has to carry it. Well, Woody's in there, the 235-pound running back. And Barnett's the quarterback in the gun. Woody. Touchdown! They did it! sure that this field can fit all 52,000, but they're going to try. What a performance by Jeff Woody on that last drive. He accounted for all 25 yards for Iowa State and the game-winning touchdown. And for the rest of college football, welcome to utter BCS chaos. 37-31, number two, Oklahoma State, ain't pretty no more. Their first loss of the year.